So how you doing? Uh, my name is Dan Shilo. I'm uh, an assistant professor uh, at Mount Sinai at the ICANN School of Medicine. Uh, I'm the director of the Mount Sinai West Interventional Radiology Lab, and I'm here to talk about uterine fibroids. Uh, uterine fibroid is an abnormal growth uh, in a woman's uterus. It is benign. It's very, very common, depending on where you look. 70 to 80 percent of women will develop uh, uterine fibroid during their lifetime. Uh, not all of these need to be treated. Uh, that's why it's important that we always do a consultation before any procedures. Uh, when women come in and we suspect that uterine fibroids are the cause of their symptoms. So what are the symptoms of uterine fibroids? We generally divide uh, the symptoms of uterine fibroids into two major categories. There are bleeding symptoms, and that manifests itself in terms of very heavy periods, uh, prolonged periods that last a long time, and bleeding in between periods. Some women have bleeding symptoms that are so severe that they actually just continuously bleed, and they don't really have a discernible period that starts and ends. Some women have required uh, transfusions, uh, blood transfusions, in order to uh, deal with the blood loss that happens during their period. Uh, many women are anemic and are on iron supplementation, uh, so the bleeding can be significant. Uh, the other main category of fibroid symptom is bulk symptoms, uh, and that's basically a result of the actual growth in the pelvis, in the woman's pelvis, pushing on the organs adjacent to it. And that can manifest itself in terms of urinary symptoms, uh, a feeling that you constantly have to go to the bathroom, a feeling that you can't empty your bladder completely when you're uh, going to the bathroom. People can have bowel symptoms, um, which can manifest itself in terms of constipation. It can happen uh, during or after inter intercourse. There can be pain as well. Um, and it can be a, just a general pelvic pain or bloating that happens during their period, um, you know, during their normal cycle. So those are the general categories that we talk about for uterine fibroids, bleeding and bulk symptoms. So how do you diagnose uterine fibroids? Uh, the usual screening test that's used is a sonogram or an ultrasound. Uh, it can be done in the office. It's very easy. It doesn't involve any radiation at all. And many of the referrals that we get either from primary care physicians or OBGYNs, uh, these patients have had an ultrasound already because it's so easy to do. Uh, ultrasound is a great screening test. Usually we'll confirm that the patient has fibroids. We'll hear about their symptoms. We'll do a full clinical history in our clinic. And then if we think that a uterine fibroid embolization might be appropriate, we'll have a patient get an MRI. And that actually gives us a lot more information in terms of how vascular the fibroids are, a little bit more specificity about where in the uterus it is. And it can actually rule out other conditions that may or may not give the patient a good result after a fibroid embolization. So usually this, the ultrasound is the screening test. And then if a patient is appropriate for fibroid embolization, we'll usually get an MRI uh, pre-procedurally uh, after the clinic visit and then discuss those results with the patient. So what are the treatment options? Uh, there are a lot of ways to treat uterine fibroids. In terms of procedures, the main procedures that are offered in the United States are myomectomy, hysterectomy, and uterine fibroid embolization. Uh, myomectomy and hysterectomy are surgeries performed by OBGYNs. Uh, hysterectomy is surgical removal of the entire uterus. Myomectomy is surgical removal of just the fibroid, uh, for which some patients are or are not candidates, depending on uh, the location and the extent of their fibroid disease. And then finally, there's uterine fibroid embolization, uh, which is what we as interventional radiologists do. Uh, it's important to understand any patient that comes to us for a fibroid consultation is always told about all of their treatment options, and that includes myomectomy and hysterectomy in addition to uterine fibroid embolization. What can a patient expect on the day of their procedure? Uh, patients arrive in the morning to our pre-op area. Um, they change into a gown, get an IV. Uh, they have a conversation with us uh, and the anesthesiologist that's there to help with sedation. Uh, general anesthesia or a breathing tube is not necessary for this procedure. In general, patients are given what's called uh, monitored anesthesia care or moderate sedation. Uh, this is similar to what patients receive in a colonoscopy. It's a, it's a dreamlike state where they're not completely out, but they don't really remember the procedure and they don't feel any pain. Uh, it's done as an ambulatory procedure, meaning patients don't have to stay the night. After the procedure, we monitor patients and then they go home. Uh, depending on 
your anatomy will either access uh, the wrist or the groin arteries using a catheter. We maneuver the catheters down into the pelvis where the fibroids are, and we embolize those vessels. Embolize is just the medical term for cutting off the blood supply to the fibroids. We then remove all the catheters and wires. If you had access from the wrist, you'll leave with a wristwatch-like device, which just holds pressure on the access point. And an hour or two after the procedure, that will be removed and we'll just place a bandage. So patients come in in the morning and they leave a few hours later with just a bandage on the groin or the wrist, depending on how we access the procedure. So what can patients expect after fibroid embolization? Fibroid embolization is very well tolerated. 99% of our patients go home the same day with just some prescriptions for pain control. Uh, some patients have had their fibroids embolized on Thursday and they return to work on Monday. Most patients I expect uh, will take about a week to recover, but there's no four to six week recovery as there might be with more invasive options. Uh, we follow patients in our clinic for weeks to months following, and depending on their symptoms, usually get a follow-up MRI between three and six months. Patients are thrilled with their results. It's a procedure that I love to do. Uh, there are multiple studies showing uh, if you ask women how satisfied are they with fibroid embolization to treat their symptoms, uh, scores routinely are 90 plus percent. Um, so it's a procedure that I love doing because patients have fantastic results. All of our uterine fibroid embolizations are covered by insurance. Uh, sometimes there's an appeals process, but we work with patients to get them the coverage that they need um, and the appeals that they need in order to have this procedure covered. With regards to fertility, uh, tens of thousands of women have gotten pregnant after uterine fibroid embolization. This is a conversation that we have uh, at our consultation and we discuss what their future fertility desires are and what the best procedure there is for them.